Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to explore hand dusting yarn using the Wilton Color Dust on some Knit Pick Stroll Fingering Weight yarn. I honestly have no idea how pigmented the color is um, or and so therefore I don't know if we will see much speckling versus sort of a light shallow penetration of a haze. I picked the Stroll yarn base because it is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and therefore absorbs color really, really fast. So if we're going to see some speckling from this product, uh, this is the situation that is set up for success. The color dust, um, which I have here in the color spruce green, is a powder and a way, I guess, to, I guess you literally just dust it on, maybe fondant or icing, to give like a shallow um, application of color, which I wonder if it's used differently from, say, the color mist sprays. I don't really know, but we are going to play with it like we might other dye powders. This green color dust contains yellow number five lake, blue number one lake, and yellow number six lake, in addition to some titanium dioxide, which we know rinses out. If you'd like to learn more about these products, I will include some affiliate links in the video description. I have had a lot of requests for, can you dye with these color dusts lately? So let's go give it a shot. I am pre-soaking the yarn in eight cups of water with two tablespoons of white vinegar for a minimum of 20 minutes. I honestly don't know if this will be sort of equivalent to one packet of Kool-Aid or if it's going to be a lot more potent than that and a little will go a long way. As for whether or not we will see this color breaking, it is technically possible but in general, if it were a purple or a black, that's something where we would be more likely to see different hues um, within the yarn. But we won't know until we try, so let's go give it a shot. While everything we are using today is food safe, I am still gonna wear a dust mask uh, so that way I avoid inhaling any particles. Here is our vial of dust. And so far tapping it, I see a few tiny specks come out. I'm a little curious about the consistency. It feels um, a lot more like acid dyes than say Kool-Aid. It is very, very fine. Um, not super granular, if that makes sense. And I'm going ahead and I am lightly speckling this food coloring on here. Now I've actually heard some mixed results but on this stuff, but right now this is looking reasonably pigmented. I'm able to get some really, really fine application in addition to something heavier. Uh, I think that per unit, this is something that is a lot more expensive than, say, the acid dyes, but goodness, with this first pass, I'm pretty impressed. Clearly, a lot of pigment is ending up on my gloves versus on the yarn sort of rubbing it to get some of that color off, but I mean if this sticks like this and that's pretty nice. I'll have to zoom in in a minute. Let's see. I guess now I've tapped out maybe a third of it total. Hmm. I'm going a little heavier now. I'm not expecting this to penetrate really deeply. And we might be disappointed and see that um, we don't get a lot of color here at all, which is why I'm now going in. I think we will end up using most of this vial 
on this yarn. But, uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy taking some. So I don't want to touch it with my gloves right now because I know that if I do, um, we'll get like green prints on it. So I've clearly been caught green handed. Um, so right now I am going to go wash off and dry the gloves with a paper towel. We're going to go ahead and let this sit for about five minutes to give the color some time to sink in. And then we'll flip it and add more to the other side. Looking on camera, it doesn't look like much, but I do have some fine, dark, speckle-like looking things. And as I said, these granules are teeny tiny. So, and you know, it's possible that they might spread out a bit more, but right now, um, this color looks like we can create some really light, um, beautiful speckles out of it. Now, I don't know how much we'll rinse out or stick behind, but we'll be back when we're ready to flip it. This product is called Color Dust. And while it looks like we're getting some cool speckles, if I look closely, it looks like a lot of these particles are sitting on top of the fiber versus sort of sinking in and depositing that color there. Uh, I wonder if this is something that is mostly insoluble. So, I'm starting to think that things may not last. Here are some areas where you can see it sort of just looks like the dry particles are sitting on top. In some places, I, it does look like I start to see some color sinking in, but in all these little specks, I mean, it's mostly just sitting on top. I also noticed as I was rinsing my hands, Okay, and now that I'm touching it, some of the color is spreading a bit. But I did notice as I was rinsing my hands that um, a lot, it took some effort to rinse off of there as well. So that is just something to keep in mind. There's no question that this has to be at least a little soluble in water. But whether or not we're going to end up with speckles is the question. I might end up needing to... Uh, do like a third round of movement and adding color. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to wait five minutes in between this time or not. Uh, and see I'm being a little haphazard. But because of my concerns, I am going to go ahead and use, I think, the entire vial on the yarn. But we've definitely like dusted my hands. I'm going to risk, you know, whatevering this and move it a bit to add some more powder in sections. To help us attempt to create a balanced colorway. We don't necessarily want something like mega repeating, but, whoops. Balance is nice. There are many different ways you can apply powder to yarn using your hands. Um, right now, you know, I'm gripping it in my fingers and just sort of moving them around. You can certainly um, use some kind of dusting wand or something as well. I think ultimately it comes back to personal, there we go, ah, personal preference. Um, with this or really any other similar technique. And trying to be careful as I open this up to add some more. But in general, I find I like the tactile nature of using my hands to do this. Um, I feel that I have some control over where the colors go. But over time, if you're doing this, you will find what works best for you. So if I had stopped a little bit ago, um, we would have had like a lightly speckled yarn. And I guess 
I thought I was going to go for it and use this whole thing, but I'm sort of happy with where we are now. And I think I want maybe, come on. A little more color. Um, unlike, you know, some acid dyes, I think that I'm treating this right now a little bit like it would be Kool-Aid. If this works, we've got some beautiful all over uh, speckles on this yarn. And I used maybe 60% of the dye in there. I could go ahead and use the rest, but I feel like I'm risking using up the rest of the color. And I think that this is a nice um, bluish green sort of speckly thing going on here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and let this sit for five minutes and then we are gonna microwave it to set the color. I have protected my work surface with plastic wrap, which is handy for steaming. In general, this kind of all over color does not need um, to be wrapped in plastic wrap. You can put it directly into the container um, that you want to steam in. But I am going to go ahead and microwave the yarn on high in the microwave uh, for a total of four minutes, but I'm going to do this in two minute increments. The yarn. Yeah, the yarn is definitely hot to touch, um, so now I'm going to let it cool completely so we can wash it. Looking through the plastic wrap, maybe I see speckles. Certainly I see a really pretty splotched green yarn. As I'm opening this, it looks like I pulled up some color on the plastic wrap, but oh goodness, I hope that this stays in the yarn. This is beautiful. But there is a lot of color on this plastic wrap. Hopefully that's just from when I started adding it. I mean, I do see some bleeding, but oh man, this is really, really pretty. And I don't think we have Kool-Aid that is quite this green. So we've got some gorgeous, gorgeous speckles but a lot of bleeding and okay so I've got green all over my hands and I don't know if you guys can see there is a lot of debris in here um, it looks like that this colored dust has something in it that is not soluble interesting ah oh. I hope it's worth it because this is gorgeous, the way that we've got these deep, deep speckles on the yarn. But I have a feeling it's going to have a fair amount of bleeding. Bummer. Uh, maybe we can start with more acid. I mean, the amount of acid that I used should be sufficient for food coloring to bind. It's possible just in some of these areas there's way too much acid. But, I don't know, I'm sort of like grasping at question marks here. I'm going to add a little bit of clear dish soap and actually raise the temperature of the rinse water. Yeah, so I don't know if this is because there's stuff on here that was not soluble that now is dissolving or what. The yarn itself doesn't look like it's losing color, even though we're definitely seeing bleeding. Um, but I think that this dust goes a lot further than we thought. All right, I'm going to keep washing this um, and try to wash it until the water runs clear. It hasn't been a huge number of rinses, but I'm in lukewarm water and I'm going to add a good old splash of vinegar to this rinse bath. Um, the amount of bleeding overall has gone down, but sometimes an additional acid soak can help the bleeding stop. So I'm gonna leave the yarn there for a few minutes. It's been a short while since our splash of vinegar. We'll 
see if that did anything. The same as bleeding? Maybe. Uh, you can always go ahead and like re-microwave it. I am inclined to think that this bleeding is because there was undissolved particles because we saw those particles just sort of float off. So uh, maybe with the color dust you want more liquid around or something. But yeah, this is looking a lot better. So I'm going to rinse it one or two more times for rinse out that vinegar and then we'll hang it up to dry. Well, color me impressed. I am really, really, really happy with how this turned out. We have this pretty much all over green yarn that has, you know, some pale green, but also some really sharp, uh, true green speckles on it. Uh, the, the speckling is just really vibrant. There's teeny tiny micro specks and then some darker patches. But even within these darker patches, uh, it is very much like a speckly patch um, versus like just being a splotch of color. And so this makes me really impressed. I think that because this product didn't dissolve very readily and it sort of sat on the surface of the fiber, that allowed us to get these great speckles throughout. It did require a bit of rinsing, so that is true, and I used almost the entire vial on this yarn. So I, I'm a little on the fence. I don't remember how much it cost. I think that if you wanted to create a really speckled yarn, um, going for acid dyes might still be the best bet in terms of cost factor, but if you want to keep your, your work to food safe dyes, this is a real viable option. And I specifically picked the green shade of this Wilton color dust because green isn't, um, and this shade of green isn't something that you can really find easily in say Kool-Aid. Now, it did look like that the green dust was sort of a deeper forest green. I forget what the color was officially called. And this is definitely like a true like Crayola Kelly green type color. This is a just an absolutely stunning yarn and I mean if if you have some around I would definitely definitely go for it. I'm not sure if I would buy this again necessarily myself but I think again if you want to stick with food safe items then this is a good thing to try out. Now when I say this is a good thing to try out I think I'm mostly referring to the matte shades. The pearlescent and metallic shades won't have the same effect. Like we saw with the color mist sprays, the, we are still able to get some color out of the silver spray, but we did not get silver yarn. All of that metallic, shiny, uh, part, all those particles did rinse out of the yarn. So, yeah, don't, don't go hoping for getting silver or even a gray out of that. We got a lilac um, out of our silver color mist spray. Beautiful, beautiful yarn still, but it had a lot of rinsing, so I don't think it is really worth the effort to go for glitter food coloring, um, pearlescent or metallic food colorings. Um, it, maybe if you're going to use them for food, but not for yarn. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you are subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and click that bell icon to turn on notifications so you can find out when I release a new video or start a live stream. I guess if YouTube thinks that you should be notified, but still, turn on notifications. Uh, and if you enjoyed this video, um, give it a like and let me know in the comments if you would like to try this technique yourself. The Chemnitz Creations Etsy store is full of hand-dyed yarn that I have dyed in past and upcoming YouTube videos. And a lot of these skeins are one of a kind from my experiments, and it's, I think, really fun to be able to bring something home that then you can watch me create. Thank you so much for watching.